Welcome back everyone. This is Frank Whiskey Charlie Zero Oscar. I'm over here in Bolsa Chica State Beach. It's a Porta site or Porta Park at uh, Kilo 3411. I just finished a an activation uh, with a QRP radio uh, 6 watts and what I want to do is I want to talk to you a little bit about doing uh, Poda uh, more into like mobile sort of and in general just QRP um, question that a lot of people ask can you do POTA activations um, with a QRP radio and the answer is of course you can but it depends on many factors and that's what we're going to talk about um, so you know what is QRP well for many hams it means that it's low power operations at five watts or below uh, but for others 10 watts or below is acceptable now some of the common radios that I think you might be familiar with uh, in QRP in the QRP space is the IC705 maybe the G90 some people would say no the Zygo G90 the FT818 that's for sure uh, or the FT817 uh, the KX2 right or the Discovery X, the TX500. Now, these, you know, what's so special about a QRP radio? Well, they have a reduced power consumption uh, when they're turned on. They don't uh, draw so much power. And you can, you can have small batteries attached to them. Like, here's my, let me unscrew this, because it's screwed to the, uh, antenna so I know it's a little bit hard to see but here's the FT 85 no I'm sorry this is the 818 and here's the battery right um, very very easy to carry this one is a bio no battery which is the 3 amp hour version um, very portable and light lightweight and which which makes it which makes it easy to carry, and that's another point about QRP radios. So if 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 the mission if it's mission critical that you know you have to carry um, not too much weight, then a QRP radio might be um, the thing for you. But um, can QRO radios, right? Those that are considered high power, those that are about 100 watts or more, uh, such as the 857D the uh, FT891, the FT991A, the IC73, the FT710. Um, these are these are sort of considered portables. Um, are they QRP radios or can they be? Well, they can be. You can lower down the power, right? Uh, QRP, I think, is more of, um, of a mindset that you're at 5 watts. But also, when you say QRP, maybe they're also thinking that you have a smaller radio. But either way, technically, yes, you the QRO radios, these portable radios, can be can you can use it as a QRP station, but they are much heavier to use, and they consume uh, a lot of power. I know the the FT DX10, which is not portable, that one sucks up almost 2.7 amps, which is a lot of power, and it's very heavy. So, how can how can a QRP radio activate a park if it's not very you know it doesn't have a lot of wattage well there's a few things that you need to consider right uh, the sunspots in the sun the antenna that you're using the headphone are you using headphones self-spotting and band activity and band activity and there's probably other things as well um, so let's talk about the sunspots right uh, Apparently, if there's more sunspots, then the ionosphere layer gets to be more activated. It seems to reflect signals from the inside of the Earth. And thus, uh, if you can reflect the radio waves instead of it going into space, you can travel a little bit farther. And vice versa, also, if there's not many sunspots, ionosphere is not as active and then the radio waves will pass, th pass through. Overall, the sun cycle runs for 11 years, and right now we're going up 
the path um, to getting better and more sunspots and more reflectivity in the ionosphere and you can travel a lot. Just recently, I spoke to somebody in, in South America, I want to say uh, Venezuela, with one watt. They were speaking to me with one watt. Uh, I was speaking with them 100 watts. So, that, so it's going to become more popular, especially on 10 meters. Uh, apparently in 10 meters, it's, it's very magical when, when the ionosphere is really uh, conducive for, for um, uh, radio waves being bounced uh, out farther into, into the land. Um, and then the next thing, of course, is antennas. An antenna that's resonating. Something that you don't use a tuner. And I know that's a little bit hard for some of us. A lot of us need that tuner to get that well um, tuned, right? To get that SWR low. Um, but if you can uh, use a resonating antenna like a dipole or a quarter wave ground plane antenna, which I really love. I have a video on that. Then I think uh, you're going to be in the right space. Not to say that you can't use a tuner. Um, also, for mobile, if you, if you have a Hustler antenna or a Diamond HF20CL antenna, those are great too. Uh, but you got to be careful with the, what is it called, uh, common mode current that could, that, could, that could easily feed into the, to the coax and ruin your SWR. So sometimes you have to put a choke right near the vertical um, element. Um, so this this whole thing, right, that I'm talking about, antennas is is just a big deal. Um, you can have a very you can have a very old radio, um, and you can still do very well uh, transmitting out to the world. But if you have a crappy antenna, that's that's not going to be great. Another thing, too, to take into consideration in activating a part, which I think a lot of people miss, is headphones, right? Have some headphones. When you have headphones, you can listen to very weak signals. It's interesting how people talk about the radios and, you know, we have filters for this and filters for that. Well, you know, having a headphones can enhance those, those filters. Believe it or not, I have been able to hear a lot more, um, you know, ham radio operators uh, with light, very light, um, uh, uh, I guess, signals and still be able to uh, give them a report. So if you have some headphones, that's great. Try them out. Um, you know, the more comfortable the headphones, the better, of course. Next, in terms of activating the park using the QRP radio is self-spotting. That's going to be super important. Um, because one of the biggest things about POTA that I've learned as somebody who's activating a park is that if people can hear you, they're gonna to try to talk to you, right? I remember three years ago, right? About, I think three years ago, maybe no more. We're in 2023, aren't we? Maybe four years ago. Wow. Um, I was trying to do QRP, uh, contacting people QRP with a QRP rig. Now, at the time, I think I wasn't using a great antenna, but when I figured it out, I was still not be, I was still wasn't able to speak to people, um, and it really got me thinking about, you know, is anybody out there? Well, band conditions were not that great four or five watts and people probably couldn't hear you um, as much and also the, the the time of day that you chose or well, that I chose today the band conditions are are well the, the yes the band conditions are better um, but uh, self spotting yourself is very important because then they know that you're out there at a certain frequency they can hear that frequency and be like, yeah, let me see if I can contact them. So, so sometimes um, that helps a lot for you to activate the park. And finally, another thing that I said was the band activity 
uh, checking the band activity, right? Checking the bands that are that are operating. You know, four years ago, ten meter band, forget it. You couldn't you couldn't really. I mean, some people will come through, but most of the time you won't be able to hear anybody. Today, you're able to hear a lot of people on ten. But usually, I'm on twenty during the day, and uh, yeah, ten might work. Uh, twelve as well, fifteen, um, and then at night. Uh, 40 meters but 40 meters is a little bit challenging for QRP um, I've tried it and it's it's not fun uh, but it but it's possible and in mobile it's even more challenging now for today um, I was over here at the park and uh, I was able to act you know to contact 20 people which is fabulous, <laughs> considering that uh, it's not a weekend. And we can see here that um, it did pretty well. And this particular park, I usually know the patterns of how far it goes. And you can see here, it um, it's jumping over California, as always. Uh, hitting Washington a lot, maybe Spokane in that area. Uh, Montana and and Idaho is something kind of new. Uh, last year I was hitting, I wasn't hitting that. Oregon, that's not that's kind of rare, but in this case, yes. A lot of times I will hit um, Texas, but not today. But Texas is a big, big. Um, a big, a big state that uh, listens to me. I uh, got Florida stations, well, Florida, Florida, Florida station, which is kind of interesting. And uh, I went all the way up to, um, I believe that's what, North Carolina, which I was surprised. Indiana, two Canadian stations. Um, again, that's kind of surprising to me um, especially for six watts now I was using the FT818 which is um, which gives you uh, six watts when you have an external battery either way um, I hope this was helpful <laughs> like somebody said you know I'm just uh, you're just another guy with the radio yeah that's right I'm just I'm just another guy with the radio that's having fun and like to share information with everybody so that when they go out there, they, they can have fun and then they, they can also share their experience. Okay, so I hope you're having fun. I'll see you later. This is Frank Whiskey, Charlie Zero Oscar. Bye-bye.